Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Anchor of the Week, where we have hard conversations, hear people's stories, and challenge perspectives. I'm Courtney. And I'm Zach. And we are coming at you with a very special episode here in our Searching for Spirituality series. If you're watching this and not just listening to it, you'll know already that we have a very special guest with us today. We're joined by Letitia. How are you, Letitia? Hi, guys. I'm very well. How are you? Good, good. Yes. Well, we are very excited because, well, first of all, we met you in what seemed to be like a super amazing coincidence, but we don't really believe it's a coincidence. <laughs> um, but in Camden Market, Zach and I were walking around just trying to like get some inspiration for our like this series. And then we happened to find you. And then even just in your market or like stall, we had the best conversation. So I am so excited for what today yeah. has for us. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to give us just a bit of context and a bit of background on what you do and also maybe a little bit about what you believe as well? Mm. So uh, in the terms of what I do, indeed, I have a little um, a little shop, uh, Camden Market, London. And uh, we the shop, I make anything that I can sell with my, anything I can sell that I can make with my hands. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we try to do. So we got a, a bit of that, you know, crafty spirit. Um, also, the, what led us to the conversation is I do sell crystals uh, that I have um, um, grown into uh, the last few years. It was it was something that I didn't know. I think the world didn't know about crystals until a few years ago. They've always been there, but it just became a buzz. Right. And yeah. then people Trendy. wanted to, yeah. exactly, you know, which you know, uh, that led me to discover what crystals are all about, and. Um, and that's for what I do. Um, and in my terms of my belief, uh, I, I was born and raised in a Christian family, um, but I happened to have discovered meditation about three years ago, um, a, a specific type of meditation is called Vipassana, which actually means to see the reality as it is. And it's a breathing technique um, that has been uh, rediscovered by the Buddha. Um, and you just uh, follow the Buddha's teaching uh, in terms of self-observation. So okay. that that's what have that that's what my my, my my discovery led me to uh to discover uh about about a few years ago and it has absolutely changed my life. I can't deny that has been one of the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. Right. So I'm not a Buddhist. I hate when when I don't hate, but I don't like when people I've had an argument, not an argument, a conversation with one of my best friends was like, You're definitely a Buddhist now. She's a big Christian. Okay. And I was trying okay. to tell her, I am not. I actually I know nothing of Buddhism. Is a religion I know the least? Right. All I know is I know Buddha very well. I know his words. Then when he talk, talk about the dogma who was created after him, uh, after his death, I have zero. I don't. I have no clue what they do. I don't. Have, I don't know how they pray. I don't sure, know how sure. they worship. I, I. I. I don't know any of their rites. It's nothing to do with me. So I'm not a Buddhist whatsoever. Right. But um, it's kind of if I could explain that I'm not a Christian, but I definitely follow and listen to the the words of Jesus. If that could ever make sense and be like, oh, I don't want to be indoctrinated indoctrinate, indoctrinate, yeah. <laughs> uh, in any way um, uh, by, by whatever certain book or certain people or scholars might have said. But I want to follow the teaching. Mm. And that, that's, kind of, that's kind of what I've been doing. I try to. I'm going to clearly state it's very difficult <laughs> and I'm struggling yeah, yeah. very much to follow the path. <laughs> but yeah, I try yeah. every day uh, to... Right. Uh, to, to do the right actions, yeah. to, uh, to, to, you know, try very hard to, to yeah. be. Uh, yeah. It's about moral, it's about following moral, conduct of moral, which is actually present in almost every religion and, you know, uh, trying to do things according to the book or a book or trying to do things according yeah. to what moral is all about. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. like, obviously the series is on spirituality and mm -hmm. we're diving into that a little bit more. And I guess from what I've just gathered from what you're saying, obviously the idea of meditation mm -hmm. and... Um, kind of understanding reality a bit more. Uh -huh, yeah. Like that's what you believe a little bit more. So is that what spirituality is for you? No, uh, what, what the um, uh, Vipassana, this, the word that stands for Vipassana, um, which means to see reality as it is. So it's an observation technique. It just, right. ob you just obver uh, it, it starts with observing the breath. Observe, you sit down and in a calm environment, you're going to observe your breath coming in and out. Um, you, there are centers all around the world that are called Vipassana centers that are actually free and you can join and um, they're going to teach you how to meditate. It's a 10 day program that is totally free, uh, supported by volunteers. And uh, when you join the, the course, they're going to teach you for the next 10 days how to meditate. And um, it's very specific in its way because uh, they need to retrain your mind. So for the next 10 days, you're going to meditate 10 hours a day. For people who has never sat on a cushion, it can sound very weird and very, wow. very yeah, scary. Yeah, my bum already. <laughs> and, and actually, he becomes very natural. But what happened is after, 
after 10 days meditating, 10 hours, which I think altogether 100 or 110 hours in a week in 10 days, yeah. um, certain certain things happen in your body that you, you we, we cannot we cannot touch, we cannot tap into that energy right now because we're not trained for it. However, if you train your mind in a certain way, eventually you're going to start feeling things within your body that we are totally numb to feel right now. So the way it works is, technically you've got the five senses plus the mind, that is a sixth sense. And they're going to continuously keep you away from the real you. Okay. They're keeping you away from actually what you feel from inside. Because the eyes are too busy seeing and the ears are too busy hearing and all of the senses and your mind is going to be way too busy trying to bring you back in the past or putting you in the future and all of those thoughts. Therefore, you can really never touch really who you are. And you're blinded all of your life. What the Buddha says is, he says many beautiful things, but one of the things he says is, we run toward death. From the minute we're born, all we do is we run toward death as fast as we can without never taking a moment to actually sit down and observe who we really are. Yeah. And, and that, that is, has been my spiritual path for the last few years trying to discover this. I don't meditate every day at all. I wish, uh, I wish I do. I just don't. Hopefully one day in my life I'll get there. But it's, I think it's a path, you know, and, it's, um, and it takes time. So you've got the theory and the practice, and you try and combine the both right. in your day-to-day -day <coughs> life to try and be a better human being. And the core of everything is very similar to Christianity, is love and compassion. Mm. So the more you meditate, the more your ego is going to naturally dissolve by itself. And the more love and compassion arises, mm -hmm. and that is the only thing left within. But how does through meditation, like how does your ego dissolve through that then? Because isn't the it's idea an, to find who you actually are? It's so a natural process. Of? It's the, 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 the dissolution of the ego will naturally occur. It's not something you think of. It's not something because the more you observe yourself and the more you're going to see the reality, what, you know, there are certain things in your mind between who you are, who you want to be, what society tells you to be, to, 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 to how to react. And actually, uh, by observing, by continuously observing yourself, you the, the ego will naturally dissolve and love and compassion will naturally arise. It's not it's not a phenomenon. I don't know how it occurs. All I know is this is what happens if you if you do that. Um, and uh, and the the beauty in uh, in vipassana, I'm not here to try and sell it to you, <laughs> even though it's it's one of the greatest calling of my life. Um, they say that all backgrounds are welcomed, whether you're Christian, you're Muslim, you it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Um, all beliefs are welcomed and it's just about observing your breath. So that's why Buddhism is actually considered, I guess, more of a philosophy than a religion because there's a spirit behind that. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the big lines, um, I guess, if I can. Yeah. There's so much to say. There's, I can, I can yeah. imagine. We probably no, can I stay can here for the next that. 14 yeah. hours. So yeah. uh, let's try and keep it short and yeah. sweet. <laughs> and so if we're talking about, so you said about three years ago, right? That you found yes, this, exactly, this yes, technique. Yes, exactly, yes, about, yeah. Um, can you kind of take us back to three years ago? And what was it that made you think, okay, I need to try this? Or was there something that happened or you just kind of got to a point when you're like, this, what I'm living right now isn't working for me. There must be something more. It was actually already, a, before, prior for me starting my, my first, uh, the 10 days that they actually teach you uh, the, the, the technique. Uh, prior to that, it took me about three years to sit down and do my first one. Yeah. It's it's a very long process. Mm -hmm. When when you understand what's gonna happen for those ten days, and it's it's very heavy in so many mm -hmm. ways. You know, uh, it decourages so many people, and then people actually join the course. They're gonna quit first day, second day, ten day. They're gonna quit because yeah. it's so di it's the most difficult thing I have ever done in my entire life, and yet the most simple. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. We ask you to sit down, observe your breath. Mm -hmm. We ask you to do that for ten hours a day. What what made you want to do it? What was like the big motive behind it? I have met a number of people throughout the, my past who has spoken about it, who has spoken. I was very interested into meditation. I knew there were some kind of secret, hidden, secret power or something like that. You know, like it, it is some, it opens, it, it, it gives you some, some next availability or capacities we technically don't have here. And I had understood that. I just didn't know how to get it. And so I have met a number of people who put me on the path. Um, and after many discussion and conversation, I decided to apply for my first one. And I'm not going to go into details, but I actually I couldn't complete my first one. And mm. uh, I, I ended up going all of the way to India to do. And after my first day, I had to leave. So in, you and, actually went all the way to India? I went all of the way to wow. India. And, and, um, and I actually had to leave. Yeah. Which part of India? Sorry. I was in Rajasthan. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And and you couldn't do it. You were just I, I, the whole story is I was single my whole life, and yeah. actually the day before walking into Vipassana, I met someone. Oh, right. and and I meet someone, and then I'm starting my course, and I'm like, oh my god, but there is somebody for once in my life who's waiting for me outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I went and see my teacher, and I was like, teacher, you don't understand. It's three years I want to be here, like so much. But right now, some destiny is calling me out. I have to go. And the teacher understood and he was like, look, I know he knew that if I'd stay here the next 10 days, I would have been extremely difficult for me. And my mind wouldn't have had been there. So he released me from it and told me go. And I actually booked it again and I came back about nine months later. And there finally I have completed my first, my first Vipassana. Um, right. and, uh, and after that, coincidences <coughs> and, and uh, it's very difficult to have a, a seat in the UK because they only have one center and it's overcrowded all the time. So you technically can't really join. That's why people go abroad because it's easier to have a seat. And and actually, I happened to wanted to to do it again, and I sign in in the UK. And there is a a little box you can tick. Is do you want to help? And of course, I tick the box. It's all about love and compassion. I was like, okay, I want to help. And then they call me. They're like, we need you to help. You can't. We need you to be there as a, as a helper. And like, okay, okay, never mind, I'll, I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, I've been a helper, and I'm loving it. Yeah, well, and right. uh, well, it's been it's been a, a few months. I haven't I haven't been there, but um, the whole serving, you know, to help to be on the other side, and actually, you know, you're helping people to find peace and happiness. You know, you're mm. you're one of the little tiny cogs in that big engine, and you are one of those cogs. And it's it's very rewarding. It's been very very rewarding to be able to. Sp- Spread the love a little bit, you know. So my like that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And then also the mic itself turn it on. Tell me, tell me. Just keeps turning. Sorry. Uh huh. Cool. Nice. I can always uh, turn the volume up and stuff. Yeah. 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 So. Cool. I don't have to click anything or clap anything. Cool. Okay, so what I'm trying to get my head around a little bit is, so the idea of meditation and kind of, from what I've understood, what it, and from what I've heard as well before, is like, it's more of a, deep, it's like a deeper understanding of the world and yourself. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So let's say you're meditating and then I'm meditating. Like we could find potentially different things, I, I, right? It's not we will right, find right. different things. So I guess for me, it, it's a bit confusing or not, maybe not confusing is a word, but it's like, it's a bit of a challenging thought because when I am searching or if I'm going to dedicate myself to a way of life, I actually, in my mind, I don't want it to be something that I'm just okay with. Because for example, the person to my right, they could be into all sorts of, I don't know, bad stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I, or, you know, let's say Courtney's like, she just has anger issues and uh, I don't know, she wants to go beat everyone up around her. This is such an extreme. Yeah, yeah, that would scenario. never happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, maybe I should use someone else. I'm no, I'm joking. But so like she could have those tendencies, right? And so when she's like diving deeper into a, more of an understanding, it just compels her to want to do that more. But then I would be like, well, that's that doesn't seem like truth or doesn't seem like, the way life should be. And then I'm going to have different things. So it feels very like, it kind of feels like meditating is almost like finding what makes you happy. But sometimes like happiness isn't necessary. Like I could be happy right now, but that, but like in, in a year's time, I'd be like, actually that was a really bad decision that I made. Right. It's like that whole reflective. <laughs> hindsight is 20. Hind- <laughs> hindsight. Yeah. So I guess my question is like, are you searching for something that, that suits you and that works well? Or are you, is it something that, like you believe there's like truth in it or you believe there's like something that stays constant. Well, if that uh, makes sense. It, it's a bit of everything. First of all, you know, uh, it, it, you, you, you're throwing me back about 20 years ago when I was studying philosophy with my teachers. <laughs> oh, wow. you know, like, <laughs> is there, is there a universal truth? What is universal truth? That's like, I guess that's probably the first core yeah. of, of what your question. Everybody has a truth. The truth, you know, the way you grew up and, and, and your environment and your education and what you were told, this is your truth today. And nobody can take that away from you. This is really how, you know, um, you know, when, when it comes down to, I think everybody uh, is looking for happiness. There is nothing else at the core. Everybody's looking for peace, happiness and being loved. 
I, I defy anyone ever to try and tell me they're not. I'll, yeah. I'll, you know, sometimes I heard, oh, people like power. I'm like, no, they don't like power. They want the love who's behind the power. Yeah. Nobody cares. If you have power, you're all alone on top of your mountain. What yeah. do you have? You need people around you. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. all about love, no matter what. And I, personally, I went into that journey a few years ago because I was very unhappy. <laughs> like you know, like I guess, I guess that's 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 what can motivate uh, a man, a woman, to to try and seek to be to be happy is to be content for what you hold. If you are content for what you hold, you don't need to seek for anything else. Mm. If it's there and you're content and you know you're not going to get any better because this is what I want. I'm happy here. I'm not going to seek for anything else. You start seeking when something is missing, when there is a void you need to fill. When when you know, I think that's. So in my own personal opinion, what I have, my, my friend sometimes tears me saying, oh, you sound like you know everything. I'm like, actually, if you're really deep, deeper, I'd, I'm the first one to say I don't know anything. Yeah. You know? And I think to <coughs> continu continuously say you don't know, it allows you to actually maybe find exactly peace and happiness. And the day you are convinced something is that way, then I think you're losing a little bit of, of truth, you know, it's to leave the door open about the I don't know. That's that is in in um, I don't know if I'm I'm answering to, to your question, but yeah. there's something else that's coming in my mind. Um, the Buddha talks a lot about um, a renunciation, you know, or just being able to let go of things, um, and somehow the fact that you know to know you don't let go, you're holding on to something very tight, you know, when you when you're convinced of something, you're not letting go of anything, you're not. You're not, you know, um, yeah. So I think everybody seeks for answers and for a peace of mind. And no matter however they can find it, mm -hmm. they will. Some people will love chocolate and, and don't understand it's not really good for them. But every day they're going to drown into chocolate because it's their little moment. I've had it. It's been, it's been my drug. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's uh, what like too. You know, so yeah. I, I, if you realize that actually this is not good for you, but maybe praying will be, oh, this is, you know. And it, it, I think it's about having... Being right, just doing what what is right for you, and um, and 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 not hurting others. Yeah. Um, but coming coming yeah. back to the, yeah. uh, I, I don't know if uh, what I believe today it will be my belief for the rest of my life. Right. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I'm open to whatever the world and the universe has to give me, and I reckon we're here on this earth to do many things, mm. uh, and most of them we don't know. If you're curious, go out there. Let's see what the world is all about, mm. and. And, and I think also to change your mind and decide, oh, actually, I don't believe in that no more. I, don't be, I, th I think it's a great sign of intelligence, you know, to be able to say, oh, actually, I believe that for my whole life. But you know what? I'm questioning it. And I decide to actually maybe I want other answers or maybe this doesn't suit me no more. Mm. Maybe that type of belief is just not for me anymore. And uh, I'm looking, you know, I think we throughout one life, we have many lives. And, uh, and so to just tell you, oh, this is here or that or it's black or white. I just would I wouldn't know I don't know um, I, and I hope I will keep not knowing you know yeah, right because yeah it's I think and also the, it's the uncertainty in this world that it makes it beautiful yeah. the day you have conviction and you know everything the way it is well die now there is nothing else to discover you know the world <laughs> you know while if actually you allow yourself to be surprised <clears throat> by whatever God has in stock for you then it, it probably will be beautiful but yeah Sorry, that was a long one. No, no, no. no we're, we're here to ask you questions, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, I think because uh, last week we we on the podcast we were talking about how um, it's when like bad things happen. Mm -hmm. in this I've world. seen, I've like, watched. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, we 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 were talking about how like people will pray or turn to a God when something bad happens mm -hmm. in your life, mm -hmm. and I was just reminded of that when you were sharing. You were like, "Well, if we're content with where we're at, mm -hmm. then." Like, like, let's. We don't need to kind of look any further. Mm -hmm. But then, when something bad happens, people do pray people more. do look mm -hmm. further. And it's it was kind of like, I I can understand what you're saying because I think we need to be like okay with where we're at, or we need to be content to this to the to the um to the point of like, yeah, like it's cool where I'm at is okay. Like I don't mm -hmm. need to freak out. I don't need mm -hmm. to overthink things. I don't need to whatever. But then also in that same way, I feel like it's not a bad thing or th there must be something more mm -hmm. because where I'm living now, I've, I believe there's more for me. Like I believe there there could be a better, 
I don't know, am I doing, like, I, I think the idea of questioning yourself in that sense is not a bad thing. And I think it shows, actually, deep down, like, people's hearts, when something bad does happen, then you're turned to something. And then you're like, you're like, oh, like, this isn't, okay, maybe what I was living, like, maybe there was more for me, or maybe there was something better. Like, so, I think, with that same idea, it's like, I also don't want to miss out on something that, that, that could potentially change my life as well. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know what the band. Yeah. They talk. They talk about saying that you know sometimes the, um, you know there's blessing in disguise, mm. and uh, <laughs> there is that great story actually that was oh there is a great story was told and it's the story of a farmer, and um, he's got a son and eventually um, um, one day his son hurt himself and he breaks his back and everybody comes and oh my god your son broke his back it's really bad and the farmer answers good news bad news I don't know we'll see, and the following day the war starts. And all of the young men are actually have to go to war. But his son, because he's got the broken back, he's going to stay. Yeah, and they're like, oh, it was actually a good thing. Your son is not going to work. He said, good thing, bad thing. I don't know. We will see. And then the following day, something else happened. And then the following, and the, 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 this, the story can go on. I can carry on like that too. Sure, <laughs> right, yeah. The way it goes is you never really know whether it's a good or a bad news. You never really, there's many, many these guys and many, many things that, you know, I remember that documentary, I think it's a guru who um, uh, was very spiritual and ended up having a stroke who actually totally um, stopped him from doing whatever he was doing. And he was already really spiritual and he said, actually, that was the best, best thing that has ever happened to me. He became totally paralyzed and he did 100% support from people. And he was like, the, the, to, to have to... to um, I'm looking for words in the beginning that I don't have. Forgive me. It's okay. Um, you know, the, to renunciate, to be able to actually to let go, that, that the action of letting go and to have to, to you know, um, sum, uh, oh my God. depend. Yeah, surrender. surrender. This surrender. Is the oh, Thank you so much. I've been looking for it since I started here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So the, the, the action of surrender, to, to yeah. surrender to, to the greater, you know, to, yeah. to what's happening. I think it's, it's, we must do it when we grow older. When we get tired, when we can't, when we can't do the things we need to do, and we realize that your life is diminishing, mm -hmm. but I reckon if we're able to do it before that moment, it will be a great source of happiness. To so surrender, I'm not there yet whatsoever, <laughs> um, uh, but I, I think it's it's something we'll have to learn to do. And and when you surrender, you surrender to everything. You realize that whatever God brings in your life may not be bad. Maybe there is greater things behind. Maybe tomorrow will be bright. And it's, I think it's one of the most difficult things. And also depends on the gravity of what we're talking about. You know, the earthquake just occurred. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to seek for God or to seek for, if you're not already a believer, yeah. go and convince someone that God exists at that moment. You yeah, know? it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's just not going to happen because, mm -hmm. because it's not going to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Um, we've always needed to believe, you know. I think, I, th I actually believe that Belief is the action that took mankind to where we are today. When you think about it, you had a, a group of Jews who were sitting on an island and they were like, we're going to build a boat. We'll go on this side. It's going to yeah. be great. <laughs> You're like, to do that, the amount of belief you the must thing, have yeah. to put, you know, yeah. to leave everything behind, you must have strong belief that there is something on the other side. Mm -hmm. and, and I think really it's the belief that made us who we are. Mm. So it's such an important thing for mankind. It's, it's, it's been since as we can go back. And history is changing every day, telling us, oh, actually, yeah, first it was agriculture. Oh, no, first it was actually God. We don't know which one created the other. Why, why did the other one happen? And I think, yeah, that's the fabulous thing about, mm. about, our, about spirituality, about our world. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really interesting. And I think, at least for us, encouraging as well, that, like, yeah, like, everyone should believe in something, mm. you know? And I think that is something that, you know, even if we don't necessarily agree on our beliefs, I think that's a great point to start with. You but know? I think yeah. everybody believes in something. Even if they don't believe in God, they're going to believe in Darwin. They're going to believe in evolution. They're going to believe in mankind. They're going to believe in themselves. But they all believe in something. You can't yeah. have someone who's going to say, I believe in nothing. Mm. No, no, there's, you believe in your dog. You believe in <laughs> something. You have something. You believe, some, that, really here? Yeah, you yeah, believe yeah. that uh, if you put yeah. water on a, on a seed, it's going to grow. So that's some, you know, yeah. there, there, is, there is belief in everything we we're, do. And I think yeah, it's very important. We're wired to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something else I want to also go back to, though, from what we were talking about a little bit earlier, um, you're saying that 
like if something else were to come, mm -hmm. you know, that you would like, maybe this is not where your belief will end. Maybe, you know, you'll take a moment and say, actually, I don't believe this anymore. And I, yeah. I found something else. But with that, knowing that, does that like, cause I mean, I come from like the position of, well, this is what I believe and that's it. And for the rest of my life, I'm locked in. You know I, what I, I mean? like that. It's okay too. Yeah. But so like, I'm like, how, how do you then live your belief right now completely fully and like so fully invested if you know in the back of your mind maybe next year or whatever like i won't believe this well to be honest i, I still i believe that what i have discovered with the buddha is unconditional to me you know now i i, I believe it is my it is my duty it's by my side it is it's to me it's but i don't it's not because i believe in the buddha that i'm not going to believe in other things or it's not because uh, the buddha leads some of my spiritual path that I'm not listening to anyone else who's going to say, oh, that's interesting too, you know? Um, and, you know, I, at the moment, a few, a few, two years ago, actually three years ago, when I discovered it, I was much more into it than I'm now. I actually stepped out a little bit and I feel like I'm more back into the normal world. <laughs> um, and it's, it's not always easy to, to carry your belief. It's not always, it's actually very difficult, I think, when you, when you, you know, to, to be alive, this is me, and this is, uh, and mm. yeah, I think I think you know, as an example, um, I'm, I'm born, I was born as a Christian, but uh, I feel like the Christ and the religion has been really, really far from me for many, many years. And now a year ago, I met someone that is a Christian, and also I think he has an impact on bringing back this life to me. Mm. Um, but I don't know; it's just about who can really tell you what tomorrow is all about, and. I think I think what I defend more than anything is is value of morality um, between mankind. Mm -hmm. You know, anything else, other belief or whatever, that's to me is just like okay, you can believe whatever you want, but are you being a good human being? Mm -hmm. You know, this is really the core of my of of, of what I, what I actually believe in mm -hmm. is is yeah. So then where would you get your like moral code, for example, right? Because obviously, so we coming from the Christian side have it pretty laid out for us, you know what I mean? But with same, the Bible. same, the, the Buddha has done that very, yeah. very much too. Okay. Uh, they're called shilas and they're actually a call of morality. They start, I will not steal, I will, uh, I will not, I will, sorry, I will not kill, I will not steal, I will tell no lies, no sexual misbehavior and no intoxicants. Those are the five pillars that we actually start, which is very similar to yours. Yeah. Well, we don't have the wine, but that's, know. you know, still it's, 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 uh, you know, Jesus never say get drunk on my blood. So no, it's, exactly. you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it's not about that. But yeah, we, we, we have, uh, we have no intoxicant that, yeah. uh, that comes in. And indeed, if you follow those five, uh, uh, very simple, um, call of morality, um, your life get easier. Things get easier in life, you know? And yeah. And then how would you, I mean, maybe you can't speak for it. I mean, because we believe what we believe of here. Of course. But like other religions then or other maybe like spiritual practices mm -hmm. that don't have that same kind of thing or they have similar things, but then for example, I don't know, they have other moral codes, mm -hmm. you know, or other extremist parts of mm -hmm. their religions yeah, that yeah. we would say like, no, like that yeah, doesn't, yeah, that that doesn't, doesn't, that fit doesn't work that. for me. Yeah. 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 So then how, how do we say then, like, shouldn't there be like a unified moral code? You know what I mean? Like this but is the, just, it yeah. actually very much is. The, the basic moral code you should not kill will be found absolutely everywhere worldwide. You know, and if there is probably an alien somewhere, they probably have a very moral code saying, <laughs> say, don't kill each other, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just such yeah. a basic component of life. Yeah. Um, and all, most religion will have the same five moral codes with a few differentiations. Um, but, you know, of course, I don't know, I don't want to uh, mention any other religion or uh, be too graphic or specific with when it comes down to, I think it's, you know, it's about liberty of someone else. Are you trying to impose it or actually trying to have a discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, and how are you trying to impose it? And does your, your freedom start where mine ends? So this, this is where... This is where we have to live all together. We're eight, seven billion or eight billion now on I Earth. Mean, I think, yeah. If I don't respect your toes, eh, we're going to have a problem, you know? Some, some toes will be chopped. It's yeah. just what's going to happen. So we just have to make sure that we respect each other. And I think is, as long as everybody is, um, you know, as kind as they can be toward it, love and compassion, put yourself into someone else's shoes and try and see how they feel for a minute. And, and that's, yeah, probably going to help for the world be a better place. So back to the spirituality aspect of, uh, of the conversation, because, and it, it ties in with this as well, because I think for me, I don't know if you can challenge this or not, but 
spirituality, it does feel very much like, like we were saying a bit earlier, like it's kind of like figuring out yourself a bit more. Uh And I feel like when it comes to like a religion or, you know, me being a Christian, things like that, I'm like, I need to need to find what's true out there. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to spirituality, it feels like I need to find just, I need to like, it's like getting to a level where you're content with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it just feels very, I, this, it sounds very bad. I, I, I hope I'm not going to uh, project offend. this. Yeah, offend you or anything like that. It, just, sorry. it just feels very <laughs> like, it can be a little bit wishy-washy is the word I would describe. Or very like flowy in the sense of like, it's not got anything it's standing on. Uh-huh. It's just like you figure it out for yourself kind of thing. A hundred percent. Yeah. But I agree with that. <clears throat> yeah. And, and so I agree with that. It's a, yeah. it's a personal spiritual path. Right. Well, when you talk down about meditation, what's going to happen is meditation, is meditation is very similar to psychotherapy in so many ways. Right. You're going to only normally in psychotherapy, you sit down and some person's going to make you talk about your past, your life. Here you're alone. And that process goes alone. And when you put you 10 days alone in a room without your phone, also there's other aspects I haven't spoken about with the <coughs> 10 days of process. But for the 10 days, you are not allowed to talk to nobody. You cannot look at someone in the eyes. You're alone with yourself. You don't have no distraction. There's nobody you can run to. Right. It's not your Instagram. You're going to scroll down when unconsciously your subconscious start torturing you with a thought that you're not aware of. Yeah, Something right. is still eating you inside and you're going to scroll down to despair. It's not being there. You, you have to face that thought. Right, right. And so yeah. you will discover things that you have no idea of. Yeah. You're going to have past memories that's going to rise up. Uh, and they are teaching you if you have the strength to observe it and have no attach no emotion towards it no good no bad just observe whatever fact that has happened in your life eventually if you attach no emotion to it eventually that thought will disappear if you attach anger or joy to that thought it will remain but if you do manage to look at it objectively with no emotion it will fade away and therefore that past trauma is healed it's gone finish now another one will arise Right. And you can keep doing that for a long time because we have many traumas. Right. But eventually, you will reach to a certain level by meditating continuously, which I have n- not done. I only know a handful of people in the world who might have done it, but I know it's possible. Right. And when you reach a certain level, there is a real, there is you 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 attain another plane, another spiritual plane. You you, uh, the Buddha, an example, could see the future or the past. There is many many things that can happen. You unlock a certain potential. You, 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 your consciousness becomes something else. But that's so far. I shouldn't even yeah. mention it. It's just like <laughs> it's like a dream that I'm saying yes. Right. Yeah. Um, but however, there's so many already. When you the the, the your second question already, um, meditation is misunderstood. It's probably the most misunderstood thing I've ever heard of. Right. It's 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 the most difficult and the most simple thing to do in the world. We sit you down ask you to observe your breath. And then crazy things are going to happen. You're going to start feeling time passing through your body. You physically feel time. You feel the blood passing through. And it's not in your mind. It really is happening because now you've sharpened your mind to actually feel the molecule of your body. And you will feel time passing through your, through your veins. So you have no more fear of death, as an example, because you observe the phenomenon of growing old continuously. Therefore, it doesn't scare you no more. So that's what happened. I don't know if you, um, I'm going to do another total different link. Um, do you know about Wim Hof? Wim Hof, no. no uh, you never heard of Wim Hof? Nope. I don't think so. Something I invite you guys to discover. <laughs> uh, a guy from Holland, he's called the Iceman. He's oh, got about yo, Wim Hof. Yes, Wim oh, Hof. I know oh, Wim Hof. Bad. Wim Sorry, Hof. wow, that is Sorry, so bad. Sorry, French accent for you. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I know Wim Hof. You know Wim Hof, yeah. I do not. So for okay. people like me, let's explain. He, okay, yeah. Please, well, go, he's go basically ahead. this guy who, he like pushes the boundaries of let's say life, uh-huh. but he like go into like freezing cold water and do breath technique and stuff like that. Just and it's been able to withstand like high de- high levels of pressure or like cold coldness. Cold or, you know, he's got, he's got twenty five world yeah, it's r- push- world records. It's, it's pushing uh, your body to the limits. And so sense. the story is actually really graphic. He, about thirty years ago, I guess something like that. Uh, he, he had four kids and a wife and the wife killed herself being bipolar oh, wow. uh, and he ended up being with four kids and the pain was uncommensurable and he was like, how can I overcome that? And he realized that every time he was into a very cold environment, pain was disappearing for a short while. 
So he just kept pushing, kept pushing until he discovered, he realized that he had discovered a breathing technique that will allow him to pretty much do anything he wanted. And he climbed the Everest in a short. Yeah, it's with it's, a team of students and like because they were like, and oh, stuff like that. only you, you, you're extraordinary, so you can do it. It's like, okay, I'm gonna take my guys, we're gonna do it together. I'm gonna show you. Wow. He, he was injected some, I can't remember some some bacteria where normally people go really bad with it, and just by breathing, he showed he could co- he could overcome it. Um, it is very interesting. So it's just showing you the the exactly what. He talks about meditation constantly mm-hmm. and um, and that just another beautiful thing that I think is very linked with, he talks about yoga, meditation, and it's all linked. It's also a breathing exercise, you know. Um, and the three pillars for Wim Hof is actually um, the cold, um, the cold bath. Oh, I can't remember the third one. Cold, cold bath and... Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> hey, it looks like people wanting more. Up. Maybe they'll research. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. But um, so I think for me though, so I, I actually love uh, Wim Hof, and, uh-huh. or I love like of what course. he's discovering in the sense of like how he pushes. Uh, yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, exactly. Like that. Maybe I think it goes a little bit extreme, but this aside to the point. But I think so for me, it sounds like meditation and this whole breathing and stuff it prepares you well for life or it prepares you even better for life absolutely and it puts you in a place where you can withstand things much better absolutely but for me still there's that underlying question of but it's still not based off of anything it's based off it's not there's no truth behind it there's a a hundred percent truth behind it so 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 there's an unconditional truth behind it is the ultimate truth is the truth of the discovery of what is within you not what okay, someone so, is telling you to read, not what your granddad told you, yeah. not is your the discovery of yourself by yourself. Yeah, right. So there is nothing that is more valuable than this in the entire world. There is right. nothing that can be more valuable than this thing ever. I think so. Yeah, that's a great point. And it is discovering myself more. And I think that's not a bad thing. But I think for me, it's like I before I was born, mm-hmm. like there was something else yeah. in this world. Yeah. And like that doesn't answer those questions. Are you I talking guess. about yourself or about the world being there before? Like they were technically they were both there before, but what are you trying to say? Like as in like I wasn't existent before yeah. I came, before my mum had me as a kid. Uh, your soul wasn't yeah. <laughs> you, well, what about your soul? My soul. Well because I don't technically in the Bible in your book they do talk a lot about the soul, right? It's something is a predominant aspect of your religion. So where was you where was your soul before well, you were I, a little baby born? Well, I was non-existent is what I believe. <laughs> so I, I believe I wasn't here before okay. I was born. Physically, you mean materially? Yeah. I mean, okay, well, yeah. I mean, Zach is in front of me for sure wasn't there. Yeah. But what about the ethereal? And what about your soul? And what about, funny enough, the Buddha, for the Buddha, it's a, yeah. you're ready? Yeah. The Buddha is a world without soul, without God. Oh, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to say it. I, I could develop. There's yeah. other things. There yeah. are many other things. But, but it's but interesting because for me, the way that I view the body, it's, or the, the person, mm-hmm. it's three. Mm-hmm. It's physical, soul, and spirit. Uh-huh. So for me, like, so physical is this. Soul is my thoughts, my emotions, kind of more the intangible parts of me. But my spirit is that indestructible, that thing that was always in God's heart. The thing that is like where the Holy Spirit sits inside me, that that part of me is joined to God, not my physical or my soul. So it's not your soul. No. But but because your book says that when your body dies, is the soul who who, who, who leaves the body and goes back to the to the to the to the one. Yeah. yeah. Well, to the source, the spirit, like the inner man's. Yeah, yeah. We can play with the words, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So actually, what you're trying to say here is what you I would swap the words because the spirit technically is in what is in your mind. While the soul is that's so interesting See, that we I have the swap, different. I would, I would swap the words. I wouldn't have it. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would have it in another way. Your spirit is what animates your mind. Your soul is what I mean is what leaves your body when you're dead. But I like because of course you have the tr- the, the Holy Trinity, right? And you talk yeah. about the Holy Spirit. Hence, why you're mentioning that the spirit is the spirit the is is what's what's leaving the body. Um, I do believe in that. You know, I believe, you know, we live in a world where the soul is so predominant in everything we do and talk about. Mm -hmm. When I discovered that the Buddha was talking about soulless, I was like, what? However, Buddha believes in reincarnation and he believes that there is actually something that is being pushed from one body to another. Do you believe in reincarnation? I do, actually. I really do. And I did before discovering the Buddha. I had something inside me was same. I don't know. 
You know, I never met anyone who was reincarnated. I, d I don't remember my past lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. wish I would, but I don't. <laughs> and um, I don't know. It's just a belief. It's something I, li I like to believe that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, reincarnation exists. And, um, and uh, by the way, the entire point of what the Buddha is teaching us is to break free from the cycle of reincarnation. It's the ultimate goal we're trying to reach. The more you meditate and the closer you are from stopping the cycle of reincarnation, mm -hmm. which you're born and you run toward death and you're mm -hmm. born and you run toward death and you're born and you run toward death. And eventually one day you stop and realize and see yourself. And there is a kind of a quote who says, when, you, when, you, when, when you're able to witness a creator, then you're out. So that's kind of that, that spirituality. That's actually kind of what the Buddha says. It says, the day that you manage to sit down and observe yourself to the point that you can see through all of that and actually see the creator, then the cycle of reincarnation finishes. Mm. So I'm trying to paraphrase everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is not <laughs> no, no, done yeah. in one of their we, books like that. We have done a bit of uh, like reading up and mm, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah I and mean, we had the Ian the Hare Krishna on as well. We were talking yeah, about Yeah, um, that's, that's really... And by the way, I think... Yeah. Buddha, he's, you know, in Krishna has, in the, the, the Hindu is to me one of the most difficult religions that exists because they have their three main gods and then they all die and they all get reincarnated in so I many did. of them. <laughs> and then you just get lost so in the, the family tree. Oh my like. God, <laughs> it's just so difficult. And I tried and I got a book, I tried a I number tried. of times. And I think Hare Krishna yeah. actually was reincarnated in the Buddha. The Buddha is, is for the Hindu, is one of their deities. It is one of their gods. Um, and it's meant to be the reincarnation of one of their main gods. So that's why they're cool with talking about the Buddha because like, oh, it's my god too. You know, so and uh, it, it is, isn't it? Uh, exactly yeah. on how things just get entwined. And, um, and yeah, so, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's for uh, the Buddha in a nutshell. That's Buddha in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. I think, well, we got, we, I'm looking at the time as well slightly. <laughs> We've got to be a little bit aware of it. But also, just going back to what we were saying, just to wrap, or maybe... To begin wrapping up. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah, slowly. Um, so, okay, so let's say, right, even um, for, for context, let's say I was, like, before I came, like, still, I had to come from somewhere, I guess, would be my question or my thing I would say. And, and the idea of, like, like I'm not truth. I, I can confidently say that. Or that's what I believe anyway. And so, I guess... I'm trying to wrap my head around like spirituality and meditation and this whole idea of like like finding what works for you, but then that doesn't necessarily lead you to truth. It leads you to be able to cope with life in a much better way, which I actually I understand and I and I'm like cool, like that actually makes sense. And I and I love like the idea of like staying away from phones or staying away from this and I like isolating yourself or the the whole thing. I'm like parts of that. I'm like cool. Like this is. So there's some really good mm, habits yeah, there, in there that, I'm, that I'm like really for actually. But again, it's just, I guess for me, it's a bit like, it seems confusing. I don't know if, I guess I'm the kind of person who would struggle to put lots of time into something that I'm just preparing to face life but it's, it's better. That's, with, you know? I think you have, a, you have a misconception of the whole thing. Uh, right. And I'm, I'm str it's my fault because I'm probably struggling to explain it properly enough. No, no, it's so good. You got that, that's why vision. we have yeah. and, chats um, and stuff. Um, First of all, I have to come back to something you said. You said, I am not truth. And uh, I want to ask you, why do you think you're not truth? I mean, like, what yeah. is your DNA, your body, your cells are not true enough for you not to be? So they're real. Uh huh. And it's a thing. Uh huh. But truth, I would say, is it's almost like, well, I would describe God and Jesus as the truth. Uh huh. Yes. And I would describe it, like, I'd describe him as truth. And uh -huh. I'd describe him as almost the answer to life, I guess, if you want to phrase it like that but i would say i'm not the answer to life but are you not are you not made in his image and are I you am, not part of it I, I am yeah i am made in his image so how come if he's truth are you not well i is have the son not not part of the father and is that whole as yeah. a whole yeah you are part of that whole yeah I, I am you're right but i'm part of it i'm not yeah the truth i'm made in his image i so i'm created based off of Truth and I and I have asked I, I have things that God has put in me for sure and mm -hmm. I have characteristics and parts of me that reflect who He is. Because you're the, talking about the universal truth here, or you know the, you know. So I, I would describe that like yeah. Because I, because you can sin, you think you're not that truth or what? I'm I'm just trying to understand. Um. Well, I'm broken. 
and that's well, what as we all are yeah and as like, we all are just, correct yeah. just and normal... i would say like god or jesus isn't and i think yes he, you know and so yes. if if there's that difference first of all amongst other a bunch of other things but so i would say like that he is truth and i i'm just like i'm trying obviously to live this life and stuff like that but i would say like i, I can't be truth because i, I wasn't faith. here i don't know anything about courtney i i don't know if, i'm not like do you know like what i mean by that is like god's like we're all made in his image uh -huh. we're not all made in my image yes, yes. like i'm i'm you yeah. know there's a very big difference that's a between, good way to describe uh, it but there, there's a huge difference between um um christianity and, and buddhism Oh, actually, there's a huge difference between all religion that I think that exists and Buddhism or the Buddha's teaching is all religion, they say, you will be saved. While Buddha says, fuck that, you got to save yourself. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing ever. And I think that's why you may be confused here, because here I'm telling you, nobody's going to come and save you. You have to do the work yourself. It's about you sitting down, it's about you going within and doing it continuously, religiously, to the point that it becomes natural for you and your ego drops, your love and compassion increases and you start seeing reality as it is. So as an example, I'm going to try and take an example. Yeah, you're seeing someone, whether it's a friend, a, a relationship, and that person is not totally true to you. And deep down, you know it. But because you like that person, you like that relationship, you like the situation you're into, you somehow... Your mind is not even you. It's subconscious what I'm talking about. You're like, no, no, that person really likes me. I like him very much. She like, you know, we're very yeah. good. But deep down, if we actually could get you to speak about it for 12 hours, at the end, you'd be like, actually, this, this person is not good for me, you know? Yeah. But because you're blinded by all of the whatever mm. can be happening, you can't see that. Right. What meditation will do is you will naturally start to unveil. You will shed all of the layers naturally. And you can't accept that reality anymore. You just be like, actually, that person she's not good. He is, she is not, that's not good for me. I can't deal with this because you are spiritually awakened in a way that you weren't before the meditation. And that what meditation does to your day to day life is it it it, it shed the light, it gives you light and an incentive on things that you normally wouldn't see because you're too busy with your life, because you're too busy with whatever. And if you manage to actually sit down and go within regularly. It allows you to unlock certain things and then you can't, you know, it's a little bit like when you know you've seen something, you can't have unseen it again. You know, it's, it's done, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of the same. And now you're facing it, oh, geez, oh, okay, I have to go, okay, okay. Yeah. And that's exactly what, what sitting down, uh, having the teaching, and learning how to meditate, of course, is the first key. But then you're meant to, they, they, when you will step out, they tell you you're supposed to meditate two hours a day, one hour in the morning, one hour at night, which... Nobody I know does. <laughs> really? uh, I've, met, I've met one lady once, and after 10 or 15 years, she now sits down every morning. Uh, oh. It's so difficult. It's, yeah. such a, it's such a difficult thing mm. because you have to give the effort. To, it's like going to the gym. There's nothing I can compare more than if you want to have big... There's no, nobody who's going, eh, a bit after you, we can inject you a few things, but you know it's not the real thing. <laughs> if you yeah. want the real thing, you need to have the right diet. You need to go to the yeah, gym. You yeah, need to make yeah. it happen. It's going to be a hard work consistent dedication motivation that's yeah. it is there it's exactly the same but with the mind and you have to strengthen yeah. your mind and find peace because i think though but i think that i think that's the bit that's similar I, that's how so, i would describe look, there, in like, I, I, we, we, there's so many similarities yeah. within everything we do you know and so for me i guess the, what i'm questioning is like um i hope yeah anyway I'm good, yeah we'll, we'll, let's keep going go on no no i want to know you're getting me <laughs> curious it's now. good yeah no no it's good so um <laughs> It's like, sorry, I'm like half it. thinking about the time or whatever it, I else. I love it, I love it. Um, He's keeping us on track. <laughs> yeah. But um, so I would say like, I have to make a choice uh -huh. as well, uh -huh. you know. Um, I guess for me, the choice that I'm making is based off of, it just feels like a, yeah. there's something a bit more concrete that I'm standing on. But I think what she said was the key. Like for her, like no one will save you but yourself. Yes, and absolutely. Us, it's wow, we need a savior. Yeah, exactly. And I think right there is right. where that, that's the big, that, that's, that's the, the big, big exactly, shift. exactly. Do you know what I mean? So everything else can kind of match up sometimes. Okay, but whatever, this is this is the biggest I mean? difference, I guess. But and the, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. nobody is gonna, there's nobody who's coming to rescue you. You have to do it yourself. Okay, I'm. I'm Nobody's gonna yeah, free yeah, us. The you. path, what what they say is the path is 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 long and is yeah. um is difficult, and nobody's gonna carry on their shoulders. 
while yeah i think um, uh, in right. christianity you have jesus who, who sacrificed his life yeah. for mankind and therefore he's also you know yeah there is all of the aspect of um, the sacrifices actually before uh, before jesus sacri physical sacrifices were made blood was shed mm -hmm. so uh, we could thanks whatever and from that moment is not needed anymore mm -hmm. yeah. because jesus has given his blood now mm -hmm. and therefore that's that's something that is not happening whatsoever in buddhism yeah, yeah. Right, um, right you know right. it's just yeah yeah, yeah. Right. so i think that that's the core if i if i can actually yeah dis describe what i believe are the core differences mm. uh between between buddhism and, and christianism if, if if this is one of the, the, the question here but yeah um yeah so and meditation helps you to find the path Medita meditation is the path there is mm. the, what they say is there is nothing else but meditation it's the only thing after uh, having a life of of morality will help you on the path it makes meditation easier if you're a good person if you're a bad person i was gonna say can you meditate if, if you're, you're like you living can't. a horrible life yeah. so there's a first thing they explain and is very true is we observe the breath the breath uh changes const con 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 constantly <laughs> yeah uh, if um if courtney is a little angry uh <laughs> I love, so I love that we're using that. The heart, the heart races. <laughs> you know, your heart races. You see something that is not right or you're upset. The first thing that occurs, your heart starts to race. Even if it's tiny a little bit, but your heart mm. changes. Therefore, your breath changes. Yeah. Therefore, everything changes. Mm. But then if you actually can identify that at the right moment and you control your breathing, it's not control, it's not a good word, but observe it. Right. Observe your breathing and realize, oh, something in me has just changed. Mm. Therefore, you can maybe try and overcome it and calm get calm quicker you know so that's what it does it gives you tips on your day-to-day -day life you can try and and you know yeah yeah i used to be big hothead I'm, i still am <laughs> but let's say now i used to be angry for 10 seconds and now i'm angry for nine there you go. it's already there a you victory go. you know <laughs> this and, is but you know it's it's true i think it's really true if yeah. you were if you were you know Losing it every minute that someone, and then you lose it a little less. Uh, it's already a victory. There you, you go. Know? There you go. And it's about being a better person today than you were yesterday. It's not about anyone else. It's just about yourself, really. How good are you doing? And mm. how happy are you today next to yesterday? You know, mm. we all have ups and downs. That's now. Yeah. How are you gonna dance with the with the down? How are you gonna embrace the down? Uh, there's the monk who talk about. Um, um, uh, anxiety, which I adore, and there is that monk who's talking about anxiety. He's like, ah, oh, before the Buddha, a lot of anxiety. After the Buddha, a lot of anxiety. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now the difference is when anxiety comes, you greet it like an old friend. You're like, ah, oh, anxiety, you're here again. <laughs> how long are you going to stay with me? Let's see how long it lasts. Wow. And it's about that because you know, it's, it's all about learning on how, how long it's going to last. You observe things, you know, you know pain are going to come. You know, blessing is going to come. They're both going to come. How long are they going to last? That's the question. That's the ultimate question for the Buddha. Interesting. How long yeah. is it going to last? In a good way, whether it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. and, and observe, and whether it's good or bad, don't put any emotion into it. Observe the fact. Observe what's happening. The more you observe without reacting, it's a very important word I haven't mentioned until now, but mm -hmm. for the Buddha, it's all about reaction. When you react to something, it triggers something else that shouldn't be there. If but you manage not to react, <laughs> you control. Your, yeah, that's it. Look, it's super difficult to complain. He's like, say, <laughs> this is how we live since we're born. I mean, like, I'm hungry. I cry. Mommy, give me the milk. It's a reaction. Yeah. Sorry, this is it. And that's 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 about it. But do you it. not think that we were given emotions for a reason? Like, we but were. I'm all not talking about emotions. non emotion. I'm talking about reaction. Reaction. There's okay. a difference between reaction and action. When you react, is I do something, you react. You have no control yeah. over it. It's true. Something well, that I say is we don't want to react to things. We want to anticipate them. Absolutely. We want to act upon them. Yeah. So when you are able to be calm enough within yourself and be, I guess, you know, confident in self within yourself to not let anything make you react, but just actually think about it and decide to act. Interesting. And that is, that is actually the whole teaching of the Buddha. That's what we're trying to do every day is mm -hmm. to stop from blindly reacting to whatever the world throws at us and actually consciously act for a better life. Um, so, and that what, that's where the meditation comes in. The meditation allows you to actually stop reacting, try to stop to react anyway. And it's, sure. uh, it's a path. It's, uh, there's no destination. There's nowhere where we're going. It's not about the ultimate truth or something like that that you can catch and seize. It's just about the day-to-day -day life. And 
and and general happiness and love and compassion. So yeah. I hope I inspired you to uh, discover a little <laughs> more about the fashion. I have so many questions. Just do some more researches, <laughs> and uh, it's 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 a it's it's a, it's something extraordinary. I, I you know, I've I've told my friends, you know, the first thing you do when you walk out of your ten days is you call everybody you love, and um, and you tell them you must do it. It's it's you you know, and I think if 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 yeah, if I could just inspire maybe only one person <clears throat> to discover this, uh, to me it would be an enormous victory because it, there's no greater gift I could give to anyone in my life ever but Vipassana, you know. I actually told my boyfriend, which is a Christian, if we ever get married, you have to do your 10 days. You have to do it. He's like, <laughs> That's oh, we'll discuss. <laughs> exactly. He's like, mm, I'm not sure about that. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, baby. I booked it for you. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we discuss. <laughs> no, I'm nothing. But it's, 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 it's very important. It's very yeah. meaningful. And, uh, yeah. and it's beautiful. So why not? Yeah. Brilliant. Yes. Well, there thank we go. you so much, Leticia. We love My just pleasure. even hearing your story. We love hearing. And we love talking to people that see things differently than we do if you can uh, uh, from what I understood yeah. 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 <laughs> this is, this is um, your little spot you like that yeah yeah but we love that we love being able to yeah to really dive deep and be like hey like I actually don't understand this about this or hey but you're you know you say this about this you know That's, so I love it and I love that we can have this space and that yeah. you're so cool to talk with yeah and thank like, you so much. Thank you so much for your time yeah, yeah it's I awesome. will be coming to the church very soon yeah <laughs> come on lad <laughs> and every time we're and you remember yeah. <laughs> I love that I'm looking forward to that amazing yeah. well thank you so much again thank you Matisha. so much for having me yeah. and uh, thank you to the team and the crew everybody has been uh, amazing yes so, uh, shout out to the girls <laughs> thank you thank you for the love <laughs> awesome awesome well guys thank you so much for joining us this week on the anchor of the week and another two attack topics and topics. thank you so much for joining us at the anchor of the week where we have hard conversations hear people's stories and challenge perspectives remember you can stay connected by following us on instagram facebook and tiktok as well as subscribing to our youtube channel hope these conversations are inspiring you to have hard convos as well We'll see you next time. And remember, attack topics and not people.